and Sanborn Coffee, blenders and roasters of fine coffee since 1864, present Edgar Bergen and Charlie McCarthy, Bud Abbott and Lou Costello, Ray Noble and his orchestra, and our guest, Edward Everett Horton. Did you hear that, Bergen? Did you hear what he said? Did I hear what, Charlie? Edward Everett Horton's gonna be here? Yes, yes. Why does he have to come here for anyway? Well, what do you expect? Huh? I've been avoiding him, you know, all week. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm going to have to face it sometime, Charlie, so I might as well do it today. Yeah. What's he so burned up about? It all happened that just because my kangaroo got loose and ruined his garden? Well, that's it, yes. Well, I couldn't help that. She didn't know better. Yeah, Charlie. But Mr. Horton has a very valuable garden. Is that so? Yes, yes. You see, his garden is his pride and his joy. Oh, yes. His garden is his baby. Well, the kangaroo is my baby. Yes. <laughs> Adopted, of course. Yes. <laughs> Charlie, I'm just a little bit tired of that Australian jumping jack of yours. Now, that's no way to talk about Charmaine, but again. She's a very valuable animal, Charmaine is. Charmaine. Yeah, valuable. That's right, yes. What good is a kangaroo? Just an expense and a nuisance. I wouldn't say that. What good is she? Well, I don't know. She can come in awfully handy. Yes, doing what? Well, I can train her to carry my books to school in her pouch. In her pouch, yes. <laughs> we could use her for a portable ashtray. Oh, no. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Might even teach her to be a car hop. A car hop, yeah. <laughs> well, that doesn't repair the damage she did to Mr. Horton's garden. Well, uh, I have a suggestion, Megan. Yes? If you'll just explain to Mr. Horton... Now, don't give me any of your help, Ray. Yes, but... If it hadn't been for you and your Australian friends, we wouldn't have that kangaroo on our hands now. Yes, but Edgar... I don't care, yes. If you... Why don't you keep that kangaroo yourself instead of palming him off on Charlie? Well, you know, I just couldn't keep the kangaroo at my place. Well, why? Well, you don't know how jealous Olivia is. Oh, you mean your wife? Oh, no, no. Myrtle's my wife. Oh, yes, yes. Sorry. Olivia's my pet ostrich. Your ostrich? <laughs> sure, why oh, she's, not? she's quite a problem, you know, Edgar. She's awfully high strung. Uh, you mean she's temperamental, huh? Oh, yes, she's terribly sulky. Gee. Just buries her head in the sandbox. Your wife? No, no, no. <laughs> My ostrich. Oh, the ostrich. Yes, of course, yes. 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 Why, only this morning we had quite an argument. Oh. Yes. Now, when I leave the house, I walk out backwards. Oh, what's the matter? Well, I'm afraid of getting kicked. Oh, I see. By whom? The ostrich or your wife? Oh, both, old boys. Oh, both. Yeah. Uh, He's in a tight spot. Yeah. You wouldn't be interested in giving her away. Now, wait a minute, Charlie. We're not going to have an ostrich on her hands. Oh, I see. Now, that isn't solving our problem either. I'm still plenty in trouble with that Mr. Horton, you know. Yeah. Well, what are you going to do about it, Bergen? Well, I guess the best thing to do is to apologize. Uh -huh. I'm a little bit embarrassed, you know, for having avoided him all week. I don't blame you. Mr. Bergen, you have acted shamefully. Yes, I, I'm afraid I'm just a cad. Cad? Yes. That makes me a caddy. <laughs> <laughs> well, never mind that, young man. Now, when Mr. Horton gets here... I know, I know. I'll tell him you're not at home like I've been doing all week. No, but we can't keep that up. We can't. No. Charlie, we'll just... We'll just have to face it and tell the truth. The what? The truth. Oh, that old thing. Yes. <laughs> you see, Charlie, the, the mess we're in now only proves the old saying that for every lie you tell, you have to invent 20 more. 20 more? Yes. Well, I think I'm the guy that can do it, too. <laughs> you certainly are. Don't you ever, Charlie, don't you ever get the impulse to, to dispense with lying? Uh, well, uh, mm -hmm, yes. You do? Mm -hmm. But I usually manage to fight it off. Yes. <laughs> well, why? I don't know. The truth and I just don't get along. Incompatibility is quite a scandal. Yes, yes. But, Charlie, you, you must force yourself to tell the truth. Yeah? Yes. Why? <laughs> why? Yeah. I asked you first. Yes, I know. <laughs> because, uh, well, because the truth, the truth is beautiful. It is? Yes. Beautiful? That's what it is. Ain't I ugly? Yeah. <laughs> See, Charlie, it's, it's wrong to tell a lie, even a white lie. Oh, I don't bother with those white lies. Mine are all in technicolor. Yes, I know. <laughs> Why, Charlie, don't you know there's even honor among thieves? Oh, I don't know. I think they're just as bad as other people. You do? Know. <laughs> well, just the same, it pays to be truthful. Yeah? Do you know how to make people look up to you? 
Well, live on a hill? No, no. <laughs> I give up. By telling the truth. Oh, well, back to that darn thing. Yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> men have become famous for telling the truth. Yeah. Famous men make a habit of it. Yeah, well, let them stick to their racket and I'll stick to mine. Yes. Somebody well, a it's a great day, Charlie. Uh, if you don't mind, please, no weather reports, Mr. Oh, Curtis, well, wait, I, I don't mean the weather, Charlie. It's no. a great day for Chase and Sanborn. Oh, is it? Yeah, look at that grin on Earl Ross's face. Yeah, <laughs> they right. Have we copped another chopper, Coben Quartz? <laughs> <laughs> How am I doing, Professor? Did you get that, uh, a Coben Quartz? Did you get Your that? Your coffee talk is perfect, Charlie. Yeah, it's pretty good. But well, what am I saying? <laughs> <laughs> you said that Chase and Sanborn are buying those rare Coben coffees from the mountains of Guatemala. To blend with the Maitlands and fancy old crop Morris. Yes, those are all fine coffees. Famous for their flavor. In fact, those are the coffees that make Chase and Sanborn truly a man's coffee. That's a good name for it, Buddy Twist. The rich, new, full-body Jason Sanborn blend that grocers are selling right now is a man's coffee. And the beauty of it is that ladies go for a man's coffee, too. And why not? They get finer flavor and more of it. And yet, the price remains reasonable, as always. Now, folks, if you haven't tasted Chase and Sanborn very lately, you can't possibly know just how delicious it is now. Our experts have set out to blend for you the finest coffee you've ever tasted. Now, we think they've succeeded as never before in our history. So get some right away and try it. Ask for Chase and Sanborn coffee now. Hello? Hello? Yes, this is Bud Abbott. Oh, hello, Uncle Hugo. Hello. Yes, Uncle Hugo. Why, yes, I'll tell Costello as soon as he comes in. Goodbye, Uncle Hugo. Hey, Abbott! Hey, Tilly hey, Murray! Right, hey. McClellan! Hey, Costello, please. I just had a call from my uncle. Oh, good. You know, he runs a uh, tailoring and cleaning shop, and he wants you to go to work for him. Oh, swell. Now, you go over there and ask for my uncle. Okay. I go and ask for your uncle. Now, what's his name? You go, ask for him. I'm gonna go, but who do I ask for? <laughs> you go. Look, Abbott, I'm gonna go, but I gotta ask for somebody. I told you to see my uncle. Your uncle what? Not what, you go. <laughs> Abbott, I'm telling you for the last time, now what's your uncle's name? You go. All right, let's both go. Oh, come on. We'll both go over. Now, now what's your uncle's first name? I told you, you go. You're an independent sort of guy, ain't you? <laughs> you don't want to give me no information whatsoever. Just Why don't you go by yourself? Why should I go? You go. That's who you asked for. Who? Oh, you go. <laughs> oh, come on, what is? What's the matter with you? Look, who's our first? No, let's not go. <laughs> None of that. Well, you get me all mixed up. What do you mean mixed up? Look, now what's your uncle's last name? Guess it. Why should I? Why should you want? <laughs> Guess his name. I didn't tell you to guess his name. Did you tell me his name was Hugo? Yes. And then I asked you his last name is? I said guess it. That's what I thought you said. Well. Is it McCarty? No. Is it Murray? No. Sherman? No. Rappaport? No. That's all I can guess. Costello, look, I'm telling you for the last time, you go guess it. Do you understand now? You go guess it. You go jump in a lane. Now, look. <laughs> care whether you go to work for my uncle or not. But anyway, here's his card. Call him up. Okay, I'll call him up, but I won't ask you. I'll ask him his name. All right. Is this the card? Yes. This is sure a funny phone number. What do you mean? Established. 1903. No, no, no. Don't be so dumb. That isn't a phone number. He's got it right down the corner oh, here. Oh, that's the year he started in business. He founded it in 1903. Oh, he founded the business? Who lost it? Nobody lost it. <laughs> well, you said your uncle found it. I said he founded it. Can I help it if you don't speak good English? Lord, he pounded it. Here's the big dummy. Pounded it. My uncle you mean he found it? No, nothing of the kind. <laughs> he founded the tailoring business. You understand that? He simply went out and founded it. Well, founded it? Founded it. You got too many keys in it. Founded it. My keys are to you. 
All right, as long as he found it, 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 it. Where did he look? He didn't look any place. It was there. Well, if it was there, why was it lost? It wasn't lost. He found it. How could anything be found if it wasn't lost? Because there wasn't anything there till, it, till he found it. Found it, 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 what? Never mind, the business. Found it, it, the business? Yes. What business? Look, he's making victory suits for men. Oh, making victory suits yes. for men? Yes, and you're going to help him. Oh, you want me to help him make That's a suit? That's the idea. Oh, boy, I'll help him. That's fine. The habit. What? Is it hard work to make a suit? Oh, it's so-so. Seems hard. No, seems easy. <laughs> what seems easy? Seems that you sew. Who sews? You sew. That's what you do. You sew and sew. Don't you swear at me! Don't you say that kind of language! That language with me! Never mind that. Don't call me names! I'm talking about sewing seams. Well, let's drop it. Drop what? The seams. You can't drop the seams. Why not? The sleeves will fall off. I was a fool to ask anyway. You see, it's the seams that hold the sleeves off. What sleeve? The left one. Without the seam, the left sleeve will fall off. What happens to the right sleeve? It's left. You just said the left sleeve oh, fell off. That's right. What's right? The left is right. And the right is left? Right. Do you mind if I loosen my garters? It's getting stuffy in here. <laughs> well, listen. If the left sleeve falls off, the right has to be left. Now, isn't that simple? Seems simple. Now you've got it. Now what? The seam. It all depends on the seam. Well, I don't give a rip. I don't want to make any suits anyhow. Now, well, maybe my uncle will give you something else. Well, he'll have to give me something else to do because I'm not going to make no suits. Well, what, what would you like? Well, uh, maybe I could help him with a little cleaning. No, no, he isn't cleaning tomorrow. I just talked to him on the phone. He said he's going to die tomorrow. <laughs> he's going to die tomorrow? Mm -hmm. Abbott, I didn't even know he was sick. Let's see. Why, well, he feels fine. <laughs> well, you just said he was going to die. Oh, he isn't dying today. He's dying tomorrow. Oh, sort of a preview. No. no. <laughs> hey, you think we ought to go up and see him right away? What for? He's sleeping now. But well, you said he was dying. I said he was dying tomorrow. He thinks Monday is a good day to die. He does all his dying on Monday. Oh, it's nice to be able to pick your time with <laughs> has always worked. Clean on Saturday, die on Monday. He'd be a lot cleaner if he died on Sunday. Oh, no, 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 no. He can die on Sunday. The union won't let him. The union won't let him? <laughs> you mean he's got to belong to a union so he can die? <laughs> and he's only allowed to die during working hours. Uh, if he dies after six, that means time and a half for overtime. <laughs> You mean he gets paid for dying? Oh, yes, 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 yes. It, It's piece work. Oh, he dies a piece at a time. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Now you're getting it. He starts with the pants. He starts with the pants. Mm -hmm. He's probably yelling by now. Well, we better go to the hospital and see him. Oh, he is in the hospital. He always dies in the sink. Oh. Dies in the sink? Uh -huh. What is he, a trip? What are you doing? Everybody else, why don't he die in the hospital? You can't die in the hospital. Why not? They have no die. You gotta have die to die? Well, you've gotta have die to die. Without die, you can't die. You've oh. got to have die to die. You gotta have die to die. Yeah, die, 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 die. All right, die. never mind, Costelli. You'll never be a businessman as long as you live. I wish that one remark you never made. You that last what? remark. No, certainly not. Here's all these opportunities you just throw them away with the wind. No, I don't. Uh, Plus, yeah. I'm a pretty good businessman. But all that kind of talk you make in that language, you get me all mixed up. What do you mean? Who's on first? What's on second? No, no, there's nothing wrong Dying with that. Dying tomorrow instead of today. I'm a bigger businessman than you are. I don't think so. Let me tell you something, Abbott. What? Just yesterday, I picked up something in the market. Yeah. And when I bought it, it was 52. And in two hours, it went up to 78. Hey, wait a minute. Went up 26 points. 26 points in two hours. Well, that's marvelous. Say, I'd like to get in on that. What do you? What did you buy? A thermometer. Debussy in the noble manner takes on added charm 
as the sportsmen sing Bonsoir. Show him in, buddy. All right. Come right in, Mr. Horton. You know, this is all your fault, Charlie. You and that Charmaine, that kangaroo of yours. Ah! <laughs> oh. There you are. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, hello, hello, Mr. Horton. Uh, what, what can I do for I you? am here to see a man about a kangaroo. And I do mean roo. Well, uh... <laughs> Did you say kangaroo? I said it. I said it distinctly. Kangaroo. A large animal, native of Australia, with springy legs, pouch pockets, and a pelt in the back. <laughs> yes, it must be the same one. Yes, I'm sure it is. Yes. Uh, Mr. Horton, I, I think I can explain... No it. explanation uh, is necessary, Mr. Bergen. No. I am only interested in one thing, collecting damages. Damages? I, 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 I said damages. I presume you received the letter I wrote you about this whole affair? Yeah, yeah, yes, yes, I did, yes. You did? Yes. Well, come, come, come. What about it? What about it? What about it? Well, well, I, uh... <laughs> the letter was insulting and revolting. And besides that, your typewriter needs a new ribbon. Oh. Now, you listen to me, young man. You have been annoying me constantly ever since you and Mr. Bergen moved in next door. Well, Mr. Horton, can't we discuss this in a friendly way? After all, we're neighbors. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Unfortunately, we are. Oh, I see. <laughs> Our neighborhood used to be respectable until certain people moved in it. Oh, now, don't be so sensitive about it. <laughs> Everybody's getting used to you now, Miss <laughs> Observations from you, young man, are entirely out of order. Entirely. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Horton, just what happened when the kangaroo got loose in your yard? What happened? Yes. I'll sir. tell you what happened. Hmm? There I was, Mr. Bergen, out in my garden, nursing my nasturtiums, harvesting my hyacinths, potting my petunias. Oh, I see. So you like gardening? Like it? Or oh, you don't like it? Gardening? Yes. I love it. Oh, you do? Yes. What, what a question. Yes, it, it's restful, oh, isn't it? Oh, it's marvelous. Yes. Really. Well, there's nothing like it. In all the world, there's nothing ah. like it. I tell you, once you get out in your garden, Mr. Bergen, the yes. cares of the whole world, <laughs> yes. they, seem, they, they seem to, uh, to uh, what is the word? They well, seem to, uh, they, uh, they, they, they disperse. Yes. Don't tell me. I know it's dispersed. Yes. <laughs> It's hobby, you know. Yes, it's my hobby. It's my hobby. Would you believe it, Mr. Bergen, that I am really a foster father to flora and fauna? No. <laughs> oh. oh, that's lovely. I didn't even know you were married. <laughs> now you listen to me, you mechanized piece of mahogany. <laughs> you are not dealing with Horton the actor. You're dealing with Horton the horticulturist. Oh. A man who is happiest when he is surrounded with flowers. Did you say surrounded by flowers? I said it. 
That can be arranged too, bud. <laughs> Call me Bob. Bob. I don't forgive him. Just Bob. ignore him, Mr. Horton. Just ignore him. Be above it. Ignore him? Yes. Well, I'll try. Yes. I'll try it. I'll try it, Mr. Burton. Yes. But it's not easy. No, I It is not know. easy. <laughs> now, where was I? Yeah, well, you were... Don't tell me. I know where I was. <laughs> I was in my garden. Yes. And along came this galloping gargoyle. Yes. This me action gopher of yours. <laughs> Charlene is her name. I never want to hear the name. Don't oh. you tell... Don't talk to me. Oh, oh, it was awful. Oh. Imagine me, imagine me, Mr. Bergen, standing there with a kangaroo staring me in the face. Oh, I see. I think our poor kangaroo must have felt. <laughs> you know what I'm doing, Mr. Bergen? No. You know what I'm doing? I'm yes. ignoring him. Oh, splendid job. It is not easy. No, it is not easy, job. but I'm doing it. Well, suddenly... <laughs> suddenly, this kangaroo pet of yours started to leap through the air like a bird. Oh. Why, it was most uncanny, the way she'd sail, the way she'd, uh... uh Soar? Uh, you're darn right I am. <laughs> now, believe me, before I could say Solidago Canadensis... Solidago Canadensis, what's that? Why, that's Golden Rod, Mr. Bergen. Oh, Golden Rod. lovely oh, yes. little Golden Rod yes. grows <laughs> in the meadows. Yes, yeah, I haven't seen any of that. Well, they do it better back east. The yes, Golden they do it better. Yeah. They do it better. There's more there than this here. Yeah. Yes, it is. Yes. Uh, Golden Rod. You I don't care for it. Yes. Well, before I could say the words, along came this perambulating pogo stick. <laughs> Why, believe me, she trampled on my tripolium, oh. she sat on my sativa, she turned up my tulips, and she ate all of my prize bulbs. Why, she's, she's, she, she is. What? She's a bulb snatcher, that's what she is. <laughs> oh, what about your pansies? My what? Your pansies. Well, luckily, I hadn't... I hadn't taken them off the line. No. <laughs> oh, 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 yes. <laughs> Another thing you know, you know my onion patch, Mr. Bergen. You yes, know that patch yes. runs right along by your wall there. Oh, I don't mind. She ate every onion in them. No. Every onion. Well, so what? My goodness, you make a fuss over nothing. So she ate your onions. So what? That's nothing oh, so bad. Oh, uh, nothing. No, no. Just blew her breath in my face, that's all. <laughs> that, she sat and chewed with her mouth open. Oh, well, now, that, that is awful. Worse than awful. Yes, yes. Kangarooism. Yes. <laughs> well, I believe me, she was so revolting, she, my, my sweet peas turned sour. Oh, I'm sorry. And my shrubbery. And what about your shrubbery? Chewed wedges in the hedges. Oh, she... <laughs> well, and then what happened? Then, then came the lawn. Uh, she spared nothing. Uh, she doesn't let any grass grow under her feet. No. <laughs> Next to those either. No. After that, she dashed for the flower bed and she ate the border. Was he paid up? Now, was he? <laughs> As a matter of fact, he owed three months back. Oh. We don't take in borders. We don't do it this way. We never did. We never did it at all. But believe me. Condemn me. <laughs> I could forgive her for what she did to my flower bed, but my poor victory garden. Oh, and how is your victory garden? Oh, she left it in utter defeat. Oh, I'm sorry. Just utter, yes. Now I tell you, Mr. Bergen, I tell you, you have to get that kangaroo out of the neighborhood. Mm. She is a menace to society. Oh, since when are the Horton society? Uh, not John. <laughs> Go ahead, you impertinent little person. Go ahead. Have your quips. Have your quips. But you two will sing a different song in court. Uh oh. Uh, oh, but Mr. Horton, you're not going to sue. I certainly am. I am indeed. I am. I'm going to sue you for maljurisprudence, ipso facto, status quo, habeas corpus. And choice of two vegetables. <laughs> Mr. Horton, you can't do this. Surely we can make a settlement. Yeah, how about, uh, uh, how about a package of seeds, Mr. Horton? A package of seeds? Yes. After all, that's all you started with. <laughs> <laughs> You're very funny, aren't you? <laughs> the court will certainly appreciate your sense of humor. Oh. Uh, well, I suppose it's your privilege to sue Mr. Horton, but after all, there's, there's no law governing kangaroos, you know. Is that so? No. Is that so? There is. Is that so? Yes, I suppose when a kangaroo won't get off your property, <laughs> and when a kangaroo just sits there and sneers at you, that's all according to law. Uh, yes. As a matter of fact, it comes under, uh, uh squatter's rides. Oh, with you. <laughs> well, nevertheless, I've advised my attorneys, Mr. Bergen, I advise them that the damage done to my property by your kangaroo amounts to $1,500. $1,500? For what? Why, my rare lilium candidums alone are valued at $500. Lilium candidums, what are they? Sir, they are lilies to you. Oh. Uh, what about your Singlossium uh, Maybellades? 
Sing Glossium and Maybelline? What in heaven's name are they? Uh, forget me nuts to you. <laughs> Come on, gang, gather around. I want you to sample a man's coffee while it's hot. And, uh, say, while we're at it, Mr. Noble, uh, how about serving some to your guests, those flying students from South America who are here today? Why, I'd be delighted to, buddy. All right, you boys just sit as you were. Well, uh, it's no more than right, after all, well, is it? Uh, how's that, <laughs> Mr. Horton? Well, they sent the coffee to us. I mean, after all, the least we can do is to send them a cup of tea. <laughs> <laughs> On my word. Uh, <laughs> yes, boys, it's coffee from home. Notice the aroma, Mr. Horton? I do. I, well, it's wonderful, isn't it? Isn't it wonderful? It fills the whole room. Yes, mm. and plenty of good, lusty flavor, too. That's what men like. Well, Earl Ross will tell you... Jason Sanborn supply more restaurants, hotels, and clubs than any other coffee roaster in the country. Where men eat. Yes, Chase and Sanborn just naturally goes with thick steaks and deep, juicy apple pie. That's how we learn to blend coffee for men. And, as it works out, the ladies prefer a men's coffee, too. To give you that fine, new flavor, full-bodied and tangy, we're buying the top of the crop from every coffee-producing country in this hemisphere. And when it's blended by our experts, you get the grandest coffee you ever tasted. That's a big assertion, but you'll find that this blend lives up to it beyond your fondest expectations. That's just how good this coffee is. Buy Chase and Sanborn coffee now. It's the Latin in Ray and his symphonic seniors, and out comes El Relicario. next Sunday when Charlie's guest will be Jane Withers. We'll all be up at the Naval Air Station at Alameda, California with the boys of Uncle Sam's Fighting Naval Air Corps. Charlie and the gang have a suggestion to make for this week especially. Yes, all over the United States and Canada, this week, May 4th to 10th, National Restaurant Week is being celebrated. This annual event reminds us all of the fine food and excellent service our restaurants provide the year round. So this week, Enjoy the pleasures of dining out. Eat in your favorite restaurant during National Restaurant Week. The date again, May 4th to May 10th. This is Buddy Twist saying goodnight from Hollywood. This is the National Broadcasting Company. Uh -huh.